Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at Judge Dredd Helter Skelter. Uh, this is put out by Osprey Games, designed by Martin Wallace himself. Uh, and uh, generally speaking, if you've played Wildlands, you probably have a good idea of how to play this game. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. But uh, this one is set within the Judge Dredd universe. Uh, kind of an iconic comic book character. That's a little bit of a niche, maybe a, has a cult following going on there. But uh, definitely some books that I read when I was in high school. Haven't read any recently. It's a very gritty uh, post-apocalyptic setting where um, Judge Dredd is... The law. That's his catchphrase. I am the law. So uh, basically, let's get down to the table. I'll show you how it works and we'll come back with some final thoughts in just a few moments. Now, the point of the game is to score five points first. You score points by either, first of all, dealing a uh, lethal blow to another opposing character, knocking them out of the game, or picking up one of your fragments of reality by one of your people in that area. So uh, the first person to get uh, a combination of fragments of reality and knocking each uh, somebody else's opponent out five times wins. And the game immediately ends at that point with no finishing turns or rounds or anything like that. Now, each round is broken up into a number of different uh, player turns, one turn for each player, and those turns are broken down into four different phases. Now, the first phase is where you're going to deploy a character onto the board, and to deploy a character onto the board, you simply have to uh, reveal, for example, I'm going to put Judge Hershey here, I'm going to reveal her in Area 37 here, which is where I wanted her to deploy. So now she is deployed and now she can act on her turn. The second phase is deploying an, another character or uh, taking actions with characters that are already on the board. And you can do this phase any number of times, as many times as you want. It doesn't matter. You're only restricted by, of course, how many cards you have to play in your hand. And then a third phase is simply declaring your the end of your turn. And the fourth phase is going to be drawing three cards up to a maximum of seven. So if you have six, uh, five cards in your hand, uh, you can only draw up to seven, which would be only two, of course. Uh, but you can draw a maximum of three cards up to seven. And then the active player marker is taken from uh, this person and passed to the next person, which means that now they are the active player and they can go through their four phases. Now the cards that you have in your hand are represented here. And of course there's a number of different combinations in each of the different decks and each of the different factions have different distributions of the different kinds of cards that are in the decks as well. But just to explain a little bit of the anatomy of the card, you basically have a column of characters that can use this card. So for example, any one of the characters of the Judge Dread faction can use this card for a basic action, whether it be movement or uh, something to that effect. Uh, but they also have a wild action that's down here at the bottom of the, of the card that anybody can use during any course of the turn. Uh, then you also have these linked actions. So for example, uh, Judge Hershey here can use this card for a basic action like movement or something to that effect. But Judge Giant can use it for a shotgun blast. And then Mean Machine can also use it for a uh, smash action, which is basically like a punch, but it's a little bit heavier. It's going to cause more damage. A shotgun blast is basically the same thing. It's just a ranged attack, and it's going to cause more than just a regular snipe action like this one over here that Judge Dredd can use. Now, the thing with these linked actions is that only that character can use it for that special ability. But if any of the other uh, characters are highlighted, they can use that card for a basic action, not one of the specialized actions. So down here, uh, the only two people that could use this card for linked abilities is Judge Dredd. He has this uh, uh, cover uh, icon, which basically if he is in one of these uh, red circled areas that provide cover. He can block a shot because he's ducking behind a barricade or something to that effect. And then there's also a precog ability that a Judge Anderson would be able to use, uh, which is also kind of a block or a defense if she's being shot at. 
Uh, and But then down here at the bottom, there's a wild melee action that any of the characters can use, including Judge Anderson and Judge Dredd. So these two have the most options with this card, but everybody else could use it for this down there. Now this one down here is special because it's an interrupt action. And this means that if you play this card, you can play it on somebody else's turn to interrupt their actions. Now you do have to wait until they have finished one complete action and they're about to move on to another one. So there is a little bit of uh, common courtesy there where as you're going through your turn you give other people the opportunity to play these interrupt cards if they so desire. The anatomy of your character cards are such like this where it first of all shows the icon that is associated with that specific character and it also gives how many hit points are used uh, are given to that character as well. And that's how many of these red cubes you'll put on each of their cards to denote their hit points. So uh, with all of that having been said, you also have some characters that have special abilities listed on them. For example, uh, Lulu Romanov here says that uh, she has this special ability of demons. Whenever you uh, melee or smash a character, you can target an enemy in an adjacent space. So uh, she has a little bit of a ranged effect with those melee actions, which are usually only reserved for people that are inside the same space that you're in. A couple of the cards that you have available to you are these player aids. Uh, this card shows you the distribution of the different kinds of attacks or abilities uh, distributed throughout the course of your deck. And it also gives you a little bit of information about uh, which one of these people and how many of those things uh, they are able to do on one side and then on the other side it has uh, that special ability that Lulu has just mentioned one more time. Uh, this is a defense breakdown so in order to defend against one of these two actions you have to have that ability and then on the other side you have a sample turn as well. So player aids are pretty useful in this one too. So just to uh, give an example of how quickly a turn can go, uh, we're going to go ahead and let the judges go first since they have the active player token here. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, deploy Judge Hershey and uh, she's going to go on to her spot here which is 37 right there. That card is removed from the game and now she comes out onto the board like so. On my second phase I can deploy another character and take a whole bunch of turns. I can take some actions and then deploy a character. It, it, it's really kind of a free form second phase uh, but it's really just denoted um, restricted as I said earlier by how many cards you want to play out of your hand. So with Judge Hershey here, she has the opportunity uh, to um, grab this fragment of reality here, which is going to score my, my fraction a point here. So she's going to play one to use this as a special action and move one space like that. Now, if she wanted to, and she wanted to use two, she needed to get up here to this area that's higher than the other ones, denoted by the, um, uh, the, the arrows here and the double white lines, she would have to spend two to climb up there. But since she's only moving one space and it's on the same level, she only has to use one. So she's done that. And now she's going to try to pick up this fragment of reality. And in order to do that, she has to discard three more cards that have the same icon, her icon on them. So uh, she's done that. She's foregoing the use of these linked actions that are on there, which is maybe not a good idea, but she's doing that. And now she's going to be able to pick up this fragment of reality. And um, the, the Judge Dread faction has scored one point. Now, uh, in order, uh, we talked about interrupts earlier. Uh, after this move action, if somebody else wanted to, they could play one of these cards from their turn and interrupt my turn do a complete turn on their uh, interrupt, then once they're done, I would be able to continue acting on my turn. But now that I've picked up that fragment of reality, I've played four cards out of my hand, and I'm, I'm pretty much done. I'm gonna declare the end of my turn, and then I'm gonna draw up uh, to, I'm gonna draw up to three cards, minding that I don't go over seven. So I draw three cards, it gives me six, and that's the end of my turn. I would then take this uh, active player icon and move it over to the Strontium Dog faction and now it's their turn to go.
The last thing we really need to talk about here is combat, and it's very simple. Uh, combat can take place in a melee situation where two players are in the same spot, or it can take place in a ranged situation with a snipe or a shotgun action if uh, a player is further away. Now, there's no uh, range limitations, but there are line of sight limitations. So you would take from one spot and draw a straight line to the next spot here. And if as long as it, the line doesn't cross any areas that have this red outline denoted cover areas or these yellow lines which denote a wall or some other kind of barrier then you have line of sight if there's no obstructions in between the two uh, points that you've drawn a line between. So in this situation if uh, Judge Hershey here wanted to make a snipe or shotgun or or some other kind of ranged attack to uh, 19 she would be able to do that and vice versa with one of these two characters here. And then, of course, these two characters here can freely hit each other within the same area with melee attacks, either the, the melee, regular melee, or the smash attack. So we're going to say that it is Nikolai Dante's turn here, and uh, he's going to attack Gronk with a shotgun blast. And the shotgun blast is denoted right here. Now, in order to defend against this shotgun blast, Gronk will have to have a deflect in his hand, which is the icon that looks like this right here. But since he doesn't have that, uh, he's going to have to take, it's a shotgun blast, two points of damage. Now he only has three, so he has to remove two red cubes from his sheet and they're out of the game, which only leaves him with one. That's the end of uh, Nikolai Dante's attack action. So now Judge Hershey over here is going to interrupt by playing a card from her hand that has the interrupt icon on it. And then she's going to be able to carry out a turn. Actually, the Judge Dread Faction will be able to carry out an entire turn, but she's just going to use it to do a snipe attack. Now, she has a special ability of high explosive rounds. Whenever you snipe, you can, if you want to, target all characters in that space instead of just one. So she's going to use that to target this area here and take a shot at both of these people. Now, Gronk, we already said, doesn't have one of those deflect actions, so he's going to have to take a point of damage, which is uh, the last point of damage that he has, which removes him from the board, and uh, that awards a point to the Judge Dread team, so they'll keep that over here as a, as a uh, trophy. Uh, but uh, Nikolai Dante does have a deflect uh, action, and so he will use that to deflect, and so he doesn't take that damage, uh, but that will end uh, Judge Hershey's interrupt, and now it goes back to Nikolai Dante's turn. And that's how the game would basically uh, progress with each player taking turns, do being the active player, possibly interrupting other players and so forth and so on until somebody has reached that goal of five points, either by picking up fragments or uh, killing off other opponent's characters. And whoever is the first person to get those five points is the winner. So that's about that for uh, Judge Dread Helter Skelter. Uh, as I mentioned before at the very beginning of the video, uh, this is basically Wildlands with a uh, simply a, a Judge Dread theme draped over it. There are not a whole lot of dissimilarities between the two games. If you've played Wildlands, you largely know how to play this game. There are some special abilities in this game that might be a little bit of a departure, maybe a few more icons or something to that effect uh, to fit the uh, futuristic theme rather than the uh, generic fantasy theme that w Wildlands was, but you get the basic idea. Um, how the game plays out is largely uh, the same as Wildlands. You just have the Judge Dread theme put into it. Now, with that having been said, I have played Wildlands before, and I enjoyed the game, but it did have a rather generic uh, fantasy theme on it that was maybe a little tired, and I, and, and I wasn't thinking that while I was playing the game. I enjoyed Wildlands a lot. Uh, I, I played it on the cruise, and we had a good time. Uh, but again, it did just have a very uh, generic theme, as, as far as I can recollect. With this one, the theme pops a little bit more. Uh, it makes it a little bit more inviting, for, in my opinion, uh, because it is not a generic theme. It is actually an IP, and usually IP games are either hit or miss for me. Uh, but in this particular case, I think it works well. 
So as we jump into my pros and cons, we'll start with my pros first. First of all, uh, the miniatures, as you're seeing here, are very well done. Each of the different factions has a number of different characters uh, allotted to them. Each of them have their own little feel, their own design, their own uh, eccentricities, so to speak, but they're all very good. All of the miniatures come with a wash on them. And then, of course, those colored bases, uh, those base rings, really help them uh, are help them be determined from the other ones. But all of these really look good, and I was very happy with the quality of the miniatures that were in there. So I'm going to go ahead and say that is my first pro. Uh, and I'll just say basic component quality, but we're really talking mainly about the miniatures. Uh, the components are all good, don't get me wrong, but the miniatures really make this game pop. I, I really like them a lot. Uh, the other Wildlands game did also have miniatures in it, so it's not a differentiation between the two. It's just that I like these miniatures, and I think they look very good. I will also say that the graphic design of the game also works. There's a little tidbit of the game that uh, in the graphic design department that we'll talk about later on in my cons section, but generally speaking, the graphic design of the game is very good. I like the fact that the board is double-sided, so you can play either in, uh, I believe it's the Hall of Justice, or on the other side, it's the... Um, uh, the blocks, um, where it's very much a cityscape type uh, idea, uh, and each of them have their differences as well. Uh, so I like that. Uh, there's a little bit of variation, a little bit of variation there. Uh, but each of the different characters, I like the artwork that was employed. Uh, it seems like a little bit of a cleanup from the actual artwork that's in the comic book. So that's cool too. I like that uh, they've, they've gone ahead and used the the original, I guess you could say, artwork uh, from the comic book. And I, I like that, or graphic novel series, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, uh, so... I like the graphic design, I like the artwork, it's all really good. My third pro of the game is of the gameplay and how simple it is. Uh, it's very much just a hand management game where you're trying to basically use the right cards at the right time, keeping the other defensive cards in reserve, a couple of those interrupts uh, as well, so that you can use those at the right time. So it is very much a hand management game that you play with these different models that are on the board. Uh, there isn't really an area control. There isn't an area control aspect at all. You don't get any points or benefit from controlling different areas of the board, uh, but you do have to get to those different areas in order to carry out you know, certain things like picking up those fragments of reality and, and scoring points that way. Um, I, I don't think that it, it would be a viable opportunity for you to just focus on fragments of reality to get your five points. Um, I, I, that might be a little bit more difficult um, because they're really kind of spread out. And that's another thing about the gameplay that I like is the how those different fragments of reality are randomly distributed uh, th throughout the different areas of the board. Uh, and I say quotes around random because it's really chosen by somebody else, but to you it is going to be random uh, because they're going to be put in f you know, five random spaces that you had no control over, but somebody else did. So it's not truly random. However, it feels that way. And I like that uh, mechanism that's employed within the game. It's, it's kind of a modified draft almost because you get to pick where your people are, but where your fragments of reality are going to show up is determined by one of your opponents. So I do like that a lot. And gameplay is really fast and it's really fun. There's very little downtime in the game. So uh, that's why this is all kind of conglomerating into my third pro. The game gameplay is really, really enjoyable. And finally, uh, you do have a variable player power uh, element that is in the game where each faction plays slightly differently and sometimes um, significantly different than the other factions. And I like it when games do that. It makes me different than everybody else. And I've said it before. Uh, it's just something that I really enjoy in board games. And this one uses the different factions that are within the comic books uh, to a very sufficient degree in, other, in order to pull those variable player powers off. Not only do you have a different distribution of the, of the kinds of things that you can do, the kinds of actions within each of the different faction decks, you also have different abilities that your characters can employ uh, throughout the course of the game too. So there is a couple of different levels of variability within those player powers, and I really enjoy how this game has pulled that off. Uh, so that's definitely a good, con uh, a good pro for me. Now, 
as far as my cons are concerned here, I there aren't a whole lot because I do enjoy the game. Uh, I enjoy the theme that is wrapped around it, even though uh, the, the the comic books are really, really gritty. Um, that doesn't show through to the game. And that's one of the cool things about it. <laughs> it kind of bleeds over from the pros, I guess. Uh, but the con that I have here is that the, the, the icons that are used for the different characters are not necessarily intuitive, especially right off of the get-go. Um, after you kind of realize that the icon that's given to that specific character uh, stands to uh, for something that's on their model, it helps. For example, uh, Judge Giant here, he has this he has this huge shotgun, right? So his uh, his icon is a shotgun character. Okay, it's a, it's it's the icon of a shotgun. So that's the that's the connecting aspect of of why that icon is for him. Well, on some of these characters, that's not widely there. You you have to kind of look for it and. It, it can be frustrating throughout the course of the game remembering what icon is for what character. So that's that's my that's my that's really the only con that I have for the game is that there's a little bit of uh, disparity between the icon that's on the card and the model that it corresponds to out on the board. And being able to make that connection might be a little bit more difficult for some people than others. So that's why I mentioned it as a con. I didn't have that big of a problem with it but I did play with others that did. So just keep that in mind, but that's really the only con that I have for the game. I, I really did enjoy this. So with all that being said, I'm gonna go, go ahead and give Judge Dread Helter Skelter a very strong eight out of 10. And the, the it's just everything that uh, I like about the theme is rolled into it. They left a lot of the grittiness of the comic book out of it. Uh, and I, I really respect that decision. Um, not to say that there would have been anything necessarily wrong. I just wouldn't have liked it as much if they had chosen to include more of that grittiness from the comic books. Uh, I think they handled the uh, the IP well within the construct of this game, and uh, that's why I've given it an 8 out of 10. It's, it's a fun game to play. It's very simple to teach. Uh, the only thing that people might have a little bit of difficulty with is finding that connection between the icons of their characters and which character that represents out on the board. Uh, but other than that, I think this is going to be well picked up, especially for some Someone who enjoys the comic book series, I think they'll very much enjoy this game um, much more than they would have Wildlands um, because the theme is something that they can uh, uh, kind of chomp their teeth into. So that's it. That's it for me. An 8 out of 10 for Judge Dread Helter Skelter. I really enjoy the game uh, and I, I recommend it for especially for those that uh, have enjoyed the comic book series in the past or presently. Uh, so that's it for me. Thanks for joining. I certainly appreciate it. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.